vision and there's the script and the actor's got an interpretation of it. What did you guys immediately think of for your characters and how did working with Greg shape that? Uh, I, I was on that early notice, you know, when I received this offer. So I was just thrilled to be <laughs> being offered a non TV movie that didn't involve, you know, Mother Mary Sue the Stranger. I just kind of trusted her and did whatever you could do. Put on the purple wig. Put on the purple wig and be it.
imagine a, a you know positive sexuality yeah. and all of that, but then it is also I mean there's there's violence and and in some points quite you know intense violence. So tell us a little bit about your vision of the world. Well, I, I mean I think it's definitely changed through the years. I think I did a lot of talk about this um, when I was doing press for Kaboom because. Um, Kaboom is similar subject matter, but the sensibility of it, I think, is a little bit different. I mean, in, in the days when I made this movie back in, you know, I wrote it sort of early, mid-90s, I was, I think, much more sort of angst-ridden, confused, there's a certain anger to it. Uh, I, I kind of called the Doom Generation the movie I did when I wrote it, sort of my Nine Inch Nails movie, because I was really into, like, Nine Inch Nails, and I'm like, <laughs> But as you get older, you know, you, you change, your sensibility changes. There's a certain like maturity and a certain yeah. I I, I have the per I mean they have a retrospective in Toronto uh, last year and they did this thing where they showed clips of all ten movies like back to back to back and it was amazing to watch it because it was so weird because you're literally seeing yourself and you're seeing yourself grow up and change and what you're di how different you are year to year to year and there is a really big difference I think and I you know I just think that that's what that's why this movie is so dear to me because it really is so much who I was in the mid nineties. Or <laughs> is this the first movie ever with hot gay characters? Because in my experience it was just like Elton John and George Michael in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Living in had hot gay characters I did no but it is the you know the thing is I mean it's amazing to me how much the world has changed. I mean certainly since this movie came out and Living in came out. I mean, there was really, I mean, Dave is, you know, was talking about it. He grew up in like North Dakota and there were no gay people. There was no, you know, women's race. There was no, you know, there's not. And so I think that it, the visibility of this movie, I mean, I, you know, this movie, because it's always been a sort of cult underground movie, I've had so many people tell me that, you know, nowhere changed my life. You know, I was living in a shithole town in God knows where, and I saw this movie and realized there was a whole other world for me. You know, I mean, and it, that, as a filmmaker, it's incredibly powerful. You know, I mean, it's just like that you could actually make a difference to somebody. So, I mean, it's like, as it says, nowhere's not the most commercial movie in the world. It can make a, a billion dollars, but it's really it, it's important to me that the people that got it, it re they really got it. Yeah. Um, I just want to say that this is a total dream come true. <laughs> I am one of those kids that came oh, to thank you. in West Hollywood back in the mid 90s. The day that this release was released, we were counting down the days. <laughs> we went to the first screening, everyone came, some of my buddies and I. We had dinner afterwards, but then we waited. <laughs> That's so sweet, and thank you. <laughs> Is that how you are with relationships? <laughs> Like, hi, Janine. <laughs> but 
we're just thrilled to find out because I don't, I mean, I'm pretty sure every girl and guy had a crush on Greg when we were shooting. I know, I know. Yeah. We all, we were dying for you. Trying to get That's hilarious. Interrupted, but oh, you're no, so hot. I do recall, I switch no shoot on. I do recall, I do recall everybody being, I do recall everybody being in love with a certain one male actor that was in the movie. I, I, including some of the males that were in the movie, they were all in love with a certain male actor who shall go unnamed. I won't say. Who was it? I have a guess. Terry Jordan, right? No. Oh, I wasn't. Somebody was not here. I don't want. I don't want the whole. Let's just say that some of the stuff that was happening on screen might or might not have been happening in the trailers while we were. Option that you chose of going a lot of w with uh, uh, close ups in all, all of the scenes. I, mean, I imagine was it uh, like the coverage you covered all and then editing you decided I wanted to go with the close ups or was it during principal photography that you decided to go with this style uh -huh. in the movie? I, uh, all my movies tend to be pretty close up heavy. I mean, I'm not a big fan of a making on a medium close up because I don't really feel, I mean, a lot of times for me, movies are a lot of times a sort of subjective experience and I and I appreciate the idea of being able to get close to somebody and the intimacy of that moment and that's why it's it's just something that's directorial. My movies tend to be wide shot and close ups without like sort of like I mean, yeah. there, there were times when we were filming and he would on the script have little storyboards right next to the dialogue. Yeah. No Jimmy the camera's like you'll see your face right there and this little sketch of his face is extreme close up. So it was, it was storyboarded that way. Yeah, so there's, 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 there's tends, I'm just not a big fan of just a kind of like generic like medium close up. Just I find it not, I would feel like I want to be closer. I mean, especially in a movie like this where it's kind of about just like youth and beauty and, you know what I mean? Like you're sort of like want to be in there. I mean, that's just, it's instinctually <laughs> sort of where, I'm, I don't know if I should say that. <laughs> closer. Um, it's just the instinctually what it, the movie comes to me. That's how I see it. Yeah, I was just talking about this with the freshman I was talking to. It's it was it's really hard. I mean, I think you should make the most of your time here. I mean, I, my time here was very difficult. Like the faculty was very conservative, and I was like I said, very artsy, punky kid, and I'm like, fuck you. I'm an art, you know, I'm good art. I'm gonna do all these crazy things. <laughs> and, and they were like, oh, you can't, you know, the whole the whole my mother Perry would say it here. It's like you can't break the rules till you play by the rules or something like that, or till you know the rules or something. And so I was always kind of punk rock and always fighting with the faculty, but I think it was, at the end of the day, really good for me because it made me super strong and super tenacious and super tough. And especially, in, I don't know about making big studio movies, but indie movies, it's just a struggle. Like, it's always a struggle. And I think that that is great that, you know, you, that's one of the main things I got from it. It's like, put in those hours and that hard work because it gets harder to be an indie. <laughs> yes. Um, I know that a lot of your movies are set in LA. And LA's like nowhere. Everybody who lives here is love. Now, when I saw the news news a year ago in London, I was really obsessed with it and decided I needed to move there at some point, and now I do. <laughs> and I was wondering how much the themes in this movie are reflected by your experience in LA, and if there's any funny anecdotes you could tell us about people that you may or may not know and you might have been surprised to meet. Well, it is true that my films are very Los Angeles, and um, every movie I've made, even Mysterious Skin was shot, it takes place in Kansas and New York, but we shot it all in Los Angeles. And yeah, I love Los Angeles, I love living here. Um, and one of the things I love the most about it is, that, and it's, it's in my movies, is it's just a surrealist place to live. I mean, it's just like somebody told me once that living here is like living in a big cartoon. And it is, because people are weird. You see the weirdest shit. You see, you know, some weird movie star, like, you know, taking a piss on. And you just see the weirdest <laughs> shit happening all the time. And, and I find the city incredibly beautiful. I mean, it's in its ugliness, you know. And I just think that there's, it, that's why I just find it, you know, inspiring. It's very much my city in the sense that. 
some people you know, tear to the city or whatever. But so it, it really inspires my work. Do you still keep uh, a tape recorder in your car and when you <laughs> drive? Do you still do that? I don't I haven't done that lately, but I do. I just look at the little microphone thing. Yeah. Yeah. He would drive along the street and he would just go, uh, the little tape that's going on, the to the right hand side of like, he would yeah. see little yeah, things. Yeah, like, when you and st- like it's see things like locations, like see a weird sign, see a weird piece of graffiti, see, like, it, because in my early movies also, the, when I didn't have a production designer or DP or whatever, like Kelly talked about something in, we literally yeah. would shoot at those locations. I would see some weird like industrial landscape with a weird thing in it or something, and I'd write it down. And then when we were looking to shoot in the scene of the living in, it's like get in the car and drive to that location. Because we didn't have Patty Podesta to make the wall with Jimmy's mural on it. It was just like the surreal look of those movies came from the surreal look of Los Angeles. I would, I would like to one day to make a movie in you know, weird, a weird place like Paris. Paris, San Francisco. Yeah, I'm just it's a, it has a different vibe. Yeah, I, mean, but I, I personally find it, I don't understand people make movies in New York because you can't even fucking park a car. Like, I'll, I have to make a movie. You know what I mean? We shot literally one night in New York for, <laughs> for Mysterious Skin. There's like 10, maybe five shots in Mysterious Skin. When Joe Gordon was on the bu- on the train station in the train and and uh, the shot of the train station, like there's just literally I don't know, five shots or something, and it was a nightmare. Like literally, like <laughs> the crew had to meet at a place and then take a subway and like yeah, it's like what? Like where is everybody? Yeah, it's like there's at least here you can park a truck and everybody can park their cars and like hey, let's make a movie and then everybody goes home. But it's literally, I remember it was like meet on this street corner and then we'll take a cab and then get on the subway. It's like what? <laughs> I don't know, I mean, yes, people do it, but... Any final thoughts? Final thoughts, yes. Question to everyone. Uh, what was it like working with Roscoe the Alien? <laughs> I love Roscoe. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't shoot me. <laughs> I call Roscoe the Alien. <laughs> Sometimes, somebody knew the name of Roscoe. I remember it, it, I, we had this mysterious skin thing once, and um, we were giving stuff away at the end, and, and I was like, to pass down said, what is the name of the alien in nowhere? Roscoe. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> 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 That's a fan. That is funny. And that's Greg. And, uh, is that your voice? Yeah. 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 And yeah. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. That's my camera. All right, guys. Before we go, I just have to embarrass someone, a couple people, actually. Yeah, you know, we're talking about Greg Rocky filmmaking style becoming a style. And I actually just finished working with a director. I just finished the movie with Martin Landau and Michael Gladys was the director back then, and Corey Capaldo. And he is hugely, wholly inspired by Greg Rocky right here. And he would constantly talk about his movies and constantly ask me on set. And before we started shooting, and after we started shooting, what it was like to work with Greg, <laughs> and how he executed certain shots, and how he wrote certain things, and how he would be watching these movies when he was way too young to be watching them. And that's that guy right there. So please come to the last break later on so you can ask those questions to the man himself. Because I am, I could, I'm just moving prop. That's what we call them. Uh, and so, <laughs> well, I, I hope we can do this again, Greg, with the uh, new generation. Or, yeah, that's what we got coming out. And your 310. Yeah. And the 310, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's so like three minutes long. <laughs> 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 all right, well, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.